I wish to apologize for the bad pronunciation of words that are in this video. Dragons of India. The Draken Indicus, Indian dragon, was a breed of giant toothed serpent, which were so large and formidable, they actively preyed on and overpowered elephants. These animals were described as intelligent and powerful epic predators, possessing three toed claws, huge jaws, a serpentine body ending in a long counterbalancing tail, also having a small pair of wing-like upper limbs coated in feathers. Even with their immense size, the beasts were well adopted to scaling high surfaces such as a tree tops in order to ambush unsuspecting elephants foraging the canopy. The description of these dragons are reminiscent of and very well maybe none other than theropod dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus Allosaurus, and other large carnivore dinosaurs. Let's say all elephants went extinct about oh, 500 years ago. For the next 400 years, they quickly fade into myth and legend. Then, some of their fossil skeletons are found in rocks dated at 10 million years old by evolutionists. They named it Gigantic Tuscus or Gigantus Tuscus. Paleoartists then tried to reconstruct how they would have looked when alive. With only the bones to go by, they portray the animal having small rhino-like ears and no trunk. For decades, children are taught in school that Gigantus Tuscus died out long before humans appeared. When anyone suggests that this animal might be the legendary elephant, they're ridiculed and branded as quacks. How could they be the same creature when it's scientific fact that Gigantus tuscus went extinct long before humans could have seen it alive? Gigantus Tuscus never had ears that big or a nose that long. Besides, elephants never existed. Although, the Gigantus Tuscus scenario is made up, evolutionists do use the same dishonest tactics with dinosaurs. We're taught repeatedly that they died out 65 million years ago and dragons are a myth. This brainwashing has caused us to completely miss the obvious. Think! If you take away the millions of years separating us the dragon dinosaur, Link, would be easy to see. Here is a medieval depiction of a large bipedal dragon preying on an elephant. 
The dragon is illustrated as reptilian and bird-like, bipedal possessing feathered wings with three toed claws, a large head, and a long counterbalancing tail. Much like many pteropod dinosaurs such as a Tyrannosaurus. Duel of Dragons On the afternoon of Friday, the 26th of September, 1449, two very large dragons were seen fighting on the banks of the River Storm, near the village of Little Carnard, which marked the English country borders of Suffolk and Essex. One of the beasts was from Killing Down Hill near Suffolk, and the other from Bellingdon Hill in Essex. One was black, and the other reddish and spotted. After an hour-long struggle that took place in the awe and admiration of the locals beholding them, the black dragon yielded and returned to its lair. The scene of the conflict was known as Sharp Fight Meadow, but is now known as Shulford Meadow. Here is a medieval depiction of a large dragon preying on a smaller one attempts to swallow it whole. The animals are de depicted by petal with three toed claws, both reptilian and bird like, having wing like upper limb, feathered plumage, large carnivorous heads and long counterbalancing tails, an intimate trait of many pteropod dinosaurs, such as Tyrannosaurus and Raptors. It is believed many carnivore dinosaurs were sometimes actually quite cannibalistic, preying on their own kind and other smaller carnivores. For many people, science has become a belief system, a world view. This is sometimes called scientism, where people take the dogmas of science to be a kind of religious belief system. And it's this dogmatic belief system which I believe is now constricting and holding science back in a very serious way. Quoted by Robert Sheldrick. 